Hello there, I'm Rachel McLaren and I'm one of the DBT therapists from the York and Selby area. Welcome to this video. So today I want to talk to you about the skill of building mastery, um, which is one of the emotion regulation skills, which is detailed in Marsha Linehan's DBT skills training manual, the second edition. And I'm going to draw your attention to emotion regulation handout 19 and emotion regulation worksheet 12. Um, both of which can be found in Marsha Linehan's DBT Skills Training Handouts and Worksheets Manual. Again, that's the second edition, um, and that's available for you to purchase online. If you're currently in DBT treatment, then you could um, access these handouts by getting in touch with your local DBT team, and they would be happy um, to provide those for you. This video doesn't constitute DBT therapy. Moreover, what I aim to do within this video is to support any learning that you've been um, experiencing within DBT skills training groups. Um, if you're not currently in DBT treatment, then I hope that this video can be informative for you and hopefully act as a springboard for you to be able to start practicing and putting these skills into practice in your everyday life. Now, if you're not in a DBT treatment and you think that DBT is something that you could potentially benefit from, then please um, get in touch with your local community mental health team and they would be, I'm sure, happy to discuss your needs with you and um, you know, advise you as required. So let's think a bit about the emotion regulation skill of building mastery. Now, feeling competent and adequately prepared for difficult situations reduces our vulnerability to emotion mind and it increases our skillful behaviour when we need it. Um, so it's important actually that we learn to build mastery as a way of um, reducing our vulnerability to emotion. So what is mastery? Mastery is doing things that make us feel competent, self-confident, in control and capable of mastering things. So as babies, we're all born with a natural tendency um, to increase our mastery. So for example, um, after birth, babies learn how to um, latch onto the breast to feed. Um, babies then kind of go on to start to reach various developmental milestones like smiling or sitting up or rolling over or walking, crawling. Um, but this natural tendency to mastery needs to be nurtured over time and reinforced through um, the sense of achievement and mastery that we get through um, putting ourselves in situations where we're challenged and have to learn. So doing things to build mastery is um, actually a really important component of two of the most effective treatments for depression, um, one of which is cognitive therapy and the other is behavioural activation. And they, um, these treatments work by um, basically taking on a range of increasingly challenging tasks um, and completing and um, achieving those tasks helps us to build a sense of confidence and competence, um, thus making the person more resistant to lone mood and depression and other um, negative emotions. Now, building mastery generally requires us to do something that is at least a little bit hard or challenging. And the idea basically is to generate a sense of accomplishment in ourselves when we have achieved the challenge. And over time, that series of accomplishments leads us to have a more positive self-concept, um, increased improved self-esteem, and an overall greater sense of happiness. So how then? do we build mastery? So this skill works um, by doing something at least once a day um, to help us to build a sense of accomplishment. And I can't stress enough how important it is that um, this is a, a, a long-term consistent effort that we need to be putting the practice in to build mastery every single day. Um, secondly, we need to plan for success rather than planning for failure. Because what we know is that um, failure leads to a lot of misery and lives of failure are lives where we've set our expectations too high. So what's really important is that we do something that's difficult for us to do, but actually something that's possible for us to do. So for example, if you decide that you're going to take up running or jogging, for example, um, and you've never done this thing before, 
then it's not advisable for you to run five miles on your first um, trip out jogging just because you've heard that other people who are fit and you know do lots of running are able to do that on a daily basis. So that would be impossible for you and the chances are it would feel so uncomfortable and unpleasant that you just wouldn't go back for more. So we're looking at doing something that's difficult but possible. And then what we do is that we gradually increase the difficulty of something over time. Now, um, if something is too easy, we're not going to get a sense of accomplishment. Um, and if something, as I say, is too hard, then we're not going to we're not going to achieve it and we won't get the sense of accomplishment. So it needs to be in that middle bit between, um, you know, down here is too easy. Up here is too hard. It needs to be in this middle bit of difficult but pos um, possible. And then, as I said, we gradually increase the difficulty over time. So, for example, I'm learning to play the piano just now. Um, and I'd never played the piano before. I've been doing it for about six months. And I've had to really work on increasing my mastery. So I started off by just playing the piano with one hand. And then I would um, start to learn the music playing just with my other hand. And then I would work gradually at trying to introduce playing with both hands at the same time in order to um, get a sense of competence by playing with one hand first and then sense of competence also with playing with the other hand. And then I can increase my sense of competence further by um, being able to play with both hands. But I'm very clear that actually I need to break the task down still um, so that I can just play a piece of music bar by bar, for example. So I don't take on the entire piece of music the first time I sit down to play. So I have to build this sense of mastery into my piano practice. So it might be, if, again, if you're taking up running, that you, um, you know, a great example of um, a, a building mastery kind of process, it, when we'll use running as the example, is the um, Couch to 5K um, app that you can use that helps somebody who's never um, done any running before in their life. You don't have to have any particular level of, uh, high level of fitness. And the Couch to 5K app takes you from literally being sat on your couch um, to being able to run a 5K um, distance in one go. And that, again, gives you graded kind of levels of challenge um, and also graded levels of achievement. So as I say, it's really important that you actually look for a challenge when you're doing this. And it's important also to remember that everybody is different. And what is easy for one person actually might be incredibly difficult for another person. So for example, you know, one person might, um, you know, be a really, really good cook and another person may never have cooked something in their life. So to produce beans on toast for the person who's never cooked in their life might actually be a huge achievement. But of course, for the MasterChef competitor, that's not going to be something that's a particular challenge. So you need to make it really personal to you and I guess lose, um, lose your focus on what the people around you can also achieve. Because um, as I say, this is your experience of building mastery and what you find really difficult actually might be something that somebody else finds really easy. But there might also be things that you find really easy that another person would find challenging. So um, I guess pick and choose what it is that you want to work on, depending on, um, you know, the level of difficulty that you have with somebody with something. And remember, again, that something needs to be difficult enough to give you a challenge um, because there is no challenge in doing something that you can already do, um, but not so difficult that it becomes impossible and, um, you know, it just completely puts you off. So I'd like you to have a go at this now and, and have a think about what it is in your life that it is that you want to build some mastery in. It might be that you want to um, start getting out of the house more and being out and about. It might be that you want to work on having some contact with people. You might want to learn to play a musical instrument or you know get involved in some crafts or it could be anything that um, gives you a sense of accomplishment and achievement and also um, builds into some of, I hope, some of the pleasant events that you're working on also um, uh, as a means of reducing your vulnerability to emotion mind. And I'll stress again that this is a skill that we need to be working on every single day. Um, because as I say, if we don't nurture and keep building on our sense of mastery, then um, we almost go back to square one. So if I kind of play my piano one day and then I leave it for a fortnight, um, any progress that I've made 
um, kind of gets lost along the way. So I need to keep playing the piano every single day in order to maintain my progress and my sense of mastery. So I wish you luck with this. Um, you can have some real fun with this. And believe me, it is challenging when you're setting yourself tasks that you're currently not able to do. But that sense of accomplishment that you can get will feel great. And um, you know, it's, it's very reinforcing to get that sense of achievement. And it really does make you wanna go back for more. So please have a go at that. Um, good luck with it and um, thanks for joining me today. I'm, you know, it's been really lovely to, to meet you again and I hope to see you again soon.